really is. It really is. Yes, it is. This is Animal Crossing. I believe we're almost at the end. I don't want it to be over. I don't. Let's hop right into the game. Oh, I'm not ready to say goodbye to these characters. It already hurt my heart to say goodbye to Apollo. <laughs> September 22nd, 148 p.m. Write anything agency. What? So the whole time traveling thing was just the ruse put on by the guests at the reception? My cry when it ends. Definitely won't. That was a lot. Uh huh. <laughs> Looks like it. I knew there had to be some kind of trick to it. Wow. Two wedding receptions. Can you imagine? I know, Athena. How unheard of. Comes out next week? It does. September 6th. I will be playing it the day it comes out, by the way. It's already pre-ordered, so. <laughs> Catch me. 5 o'clock. Actually, maybe earlier. Because it's a Friday. I don't work Fridays. <laughs> Hoorah! <laughs> Can you imagine? Hello? Controller? Hello? It wasn't my controller, I was tapped out. <laughs> Can you imagine? I wonder how much that must have cost them. I have no idea. But if you have to ask, you're not rich enough to want to know. Still, if you've got the money, it's a pretty good way to cover things up if you ask me. You got that right. I'm sure I would have been completely fooled. Hi! I'm back! Hi, Maya! Hey, Maya. <laughs> Are you all set to go? <laughs> Shipping her back off to Korion. We don't want you here. Yep. 
ready when you are. So, what should we start with? Hmm, let's start with reviewing what we learned at the trial. What Ellen thought was time travel was really just a performance put on by the Sprockets. But other than that, it seems that what Ellen told us was actually all true. So what really matters right now is the identity of the mystery person Ellen said she saw. Bibi. Ellen said she saw while she was being attacked. So who is this mystery person? That's the million dollar question, I'm afraid. But if we want to clear Ellen of any suspicion, then figuring out who they are is key. I think I'll take toilets for $200 instead, Mr. Wright. Well, at least there were only so many people in that airship that night. And we know who the mastermind of the whole cover-up plot was, too, so that's good. You mean the groom Soren Sprocket, right? Exactly. He might know something that could help us out. So then, what am I doing here? Oh, Larry. So then, what am I doing here? I'm a very busy man, you know. Oh, I'm sure, Larry, I'm sure. Well, all the other people involved are Soren's family members. So I thought I'd better start by interviewing you. Even if I probably shouldn't trust a word out of your mouth. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, I was watching my playback. <laughs> I was... I have a really tight schedule, but... Aw, oh, heck. What are friends for, right? Okay, pal. Go ahead. Ask me anything. Killers need to learn how important it is to lie better. Real. <laughs> I'm learning how to do the mods. You got this. You got this. <laughs> um, you do remember it was you who came to me for help in the first place, right? Okay, fine. Nothing new to examine. But Larry, have you seen my attorney's badge? <laughs> well, what are you showing me your attorney's badge for? Wait, are you saying you want me to take up your badge and hit the courtroom? Oh god, no. Is this the first time Larry's seen him in like nine years? He said- he mentioned Phoenix's piano playing, so I feel like it hasn't been that long. Uh, absolutely not. With you as the defense, you're liable to bring the whole courthouse down. Literally. All I want is one chance to defend somebody in court. Objection! How is that? Pretty good, huh? Ready to let me borrow your badge now? Larry, do you look like your name is Miles Edgeworth? Because only Miles Edgeworth's allowed to borrow my badge. You saw how awesome I am at pointing, right? I'm starting to think I'm a natural. I'm not lending you my badge, and that's final. Besides, pointing isn't all that a lawyer does. What? They do more? <laughs> Aw, pretty please. What do you got to lose? My reputation, for one. I never should have shown him my badge. I want to go over exactly what happened when I... I want to go over what... Oh my god. I want to go over exactly what happened when before I step outside this office again. 
Since you were there, Larry, do you think you could help me get it all straight in my head? <laughs> Please, Larry, you gotta help me be straight. Oh, if I gotta. <laughs> Aww. Okay, so the first reception was held at 7 p.m. on the day of the incident. That's the one you tried to crash, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, that's right. And then they locked me up in a cabin. It was awful, I tell you. Too bad we're not here to focus on you, Larry. And then the incident occurred after this first reception at around 10 p.m. Whoa. Ellen was attacked in the reception hall by Gloomsbury. He forced her out onto the Vista deck and was just about to kill her. But Ellie fought back and ended up killing old Gloomsbury instead. To cover it up, the family quickly threw together a second reception. That's what Edgy is claiming anyway. But I know my Ellie didn't do it. The key point here is the mystery person Ellie said- El God, got me saying Ellie. Mystery person Ellen says she saw strike Gloomsbury. She sells seashells. <laughs> Just before she passed out. Did you see anybody suspicious skulking around that day? Nope, not a soul. Because I was locked up in the cabin at the time. But you managed to escape and sneak back into the reception hall. That's when you switched the lantern in the event hall with the lantern in the hold, right? Nice recap, nice recap we're doing here. Did you see anybody then? Nope, the place was completely deserted. I guess because that Pierce Butler guy had everybody gathered together somewhere. That makes sense. He must have been going over the cover-up plan with them. So clearly the murder had already happened by the time Larry got out. They must have gotten everything ready fast and had the second reception soon after that. So it was the same day? Then after that second reception, Ellie went to clean up the reception hall. And as luck would have it, that's when she found the body and the lantern I'd brought up. I tried to do something nice for Ellie out of the goodness of my heart, and this happened! Hmm. We still don't know exactly what happened during the actual murder itself. We'll just have to look into it along with the identity of that mystery person. So, while the murder was taking place, you were locked up in a cabin. Did you see anything unusual while you were in there? In the cabin? Let's see. Well, there was that pterodactyl flying through the sky. That's pretty unusual. Yeah, stand standard stuff, you know, pterodactyls flying through the sky. <laughs> Average day. What's funny to me is that Miles says he's looking for the truth and nothing but the truth, but he's doing everything he can to accuse Helen despite how sus the Sprocket family are. I think he's just playing it. He's, he is a prosecutor, so it's going to be a bit off if he doesn't do that. <laughs> it is his job, to be fair. Right. That drawing of that pterodactyl you saw. Like, he's not like Von Karma levels of, Alright, trial's over. Yep, guilty. Let's go. <laughs> Snap of the fingers, he's, she's guilty, lock her up. Like, he's actually letting the trial go. And learning the truth through the trial. <laughs> That's what he taught Phoenix in the Matt on Guard case. What was all the air quotes? I really did see it, I swear! But Larry, the time travel thing never actually happened. Which means you couldn't have seen a real pterodactyl flying through the sky. He, that's true, he did have that one moment where he was like, judge verdict, please. Well, that's just Edra being grumpy because, <laughs> to be fair, the entire trial, Phoenix was kind of dogging on him for <laughs> his dating habits. <laughs> Which means you couldn't have seen a real pterodactyl flying through the sky. Yes. Dogging. 
That's a it's a word. Don't make it weird. No. Oh. Are you doubting the eye of a super popular picture book author? It's a word, yes. <laughs> no, I'm sure just sure you saw something else and mistook that for a flying reptile. Nick, you're making me doubt my own eyes. No, I'm not even sure what I saw. A drawing Larry made, he probably mistook something for what he claims is a pterodactyl in his picture. Either way, you have no idea what actually happened at the real scene of the murder. That's right, and I can say that with every confidence. Oh wow. Would you look at the time? I'd better go. I have a book signing to get to. A book signing? Whose book? <laughs> who do you think, Phoenix? Who, who, who possibly? Whose book could it possibly be? Whose do you think? It's mine, of course. It's a Larice Donum book signing. I bet you went around and begged a bunch of bookstores to let you do one. Damn. Of course not! They're the ones coming around to beg me! Looks like I guessed right. Anyway, I have to go! I'll send you ten copies of my new book that just got released the other day. Alright? Ten? That's very generous of you. What are you talking about? I'm gonna send you the bill too, of course. Oh, Larry. <laughs> Just put him down as office expenses or something. We'll see ya. Alright. Wait, Larry. We don't need... Ugh, he's gone. I'll take a copy, boss. Oh, and make sure it's signed. You hey boy. Trucy's not gonna like this office expense. I love how... <laughs>
she's really lost that spark. Ever since I proved that time traveling wasn't real in court today. <laughs> no, let, let, let's get this straight, Phoenix. You know, you did not prove that time travel wasn't real. You proved that time travel wasn't used in this specific case. <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> and before that, you were trying to prove that time travel was real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, actually, honestly, you didn't do anything. It was Pierce that was like, oh yeah, we faked it. <laughs> Come on. Hey, Maya, wanna look at my badge? Okay. <laughs> Where should we go? Why not? Detention center. Oh. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, my poor sweet Soren. I wonder how he's getting along without me. Hello, Ellen. Oh, Mr. Wright! What's going to happen with the trial, do you think? Well, first and foremost, we have to hurry up and find this mystery person you saw just before you passed out. Do you think that person could be the real killer? It's quite possible, and if we can prove that, we can clear you of all charges. Actually, would you happen to know where Soren is right now? He's usually busy with meetings all afternoon, but he should be home by evening. Okay, Ellen, thanks. I think I'd better go have a chat with him later, then. You can put those down now, Ellen. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Why am I being treated to a view of someone's underwear? That's a great question, Phoenix. <laughs> Mr. Wright, don't tell me. You suspect my sweet Soren? Well, he is the one who masterminded the second reception after the time skip. So I thought he might be able to tell us something. How could you, Mr. Wright? You can't possibly think my Soren would never kill anyone. All right, all right, just, just calm down. No, not if you're accusing my Soren. Please, I'm not accusing anybody, so please put the pan and ladle down, all right? Cross my heart. Hope to die. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time underwear was pulled out an ace attorney, <laughs> I'd have a worrying amount of nickel. So for now, would you mind if I ask you a few more things about the case? I better be careful not to provoke her. Did you tell me about Soren? There's nothing to tell. He's squeaky clean. All right, okay. Maybe I should avoid the topic of Soren right now. Let's talk about something else then. Fine, but you won't hear a peep out of me about Soren. Talk about pulling teeth. Okay, let's talk about Pierce Nickety. Could you tell me about Pierce Nickety then? Pierce. He came to Sprocket Manor about a year ago, so he's new? Interesting. As the family butler, he's now in charge of everything in the household. Is that her standard clean? I think I'm in. You got this, Matt. Go for it. Prime time right now. <laughs> Only a year ago? Did he have some kind of special connection with the family? The family. He's got the connection with the family. 
I'm just the maid, so I'm not privy to such things, I'm afraid. It might have been Soren's order, but Pierce is the one who coordinated the whole thing. He's the one who really orchestrated the grand time travel farce. He must have quite a bit of authority in that family. But no matter how good he is at his job, how could anybody gain that much influence in a single year? I really don't know. I mean, he is an excellent butler. Wouldn't that explain it? Hmm. Is it really as simple as that? Time travel. What you felt was time travel is really just the cover-up carried out by your in-laws. Pierce said Soren was the one who ordered the whole thing. I still can't believe it. Even if the second reception was fake. Soren would never use time travel for something like that. He's very serious about his time travel research, you know. I heard there's a reason he's researching time machines, actually. Something about something he wishes he could change? But isn't the whole idea of traveling back in time itself a little... fantastic? I don't think so. After all, Soren said real time travelers do exist. Oh, I bet he has. Really now? You think he knows someone who actually traveled through time? That's right. I haven't seen it personally, but Soren said as much. So I believe it. Somebody who actually traveled through time, huh? It's pretty hard to believe. Thank you, Ellen. You're going out to do your investigation now, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Please make sure you don't cause Soren any trouble, okay? I'm afraid I can't promise you that. What? Dude. Dude, please, whatever you do, please don't upset my poor Soren any further. Dude, just lie to her. She, what, what's she going to do? She is in a detention center. She's not going to find out. Just lie and say, I won't. I promise. Like, dude. <laughs> I'm begging you. I'll do my best not to cause him any unnecessary trouble. Oh, I couldn't bear it if Soren ever came under suspicion. I'd rather be found guilty myself. <laughs> Yikes. Ellen, please, don't work yourself up like this. You don't want Soren to worry, do you? Oh. Dude, how does her hair get fixed? She never touches it. No, you're right. And the floodwaters recede once more. So, what do we do now, Nick? Well, Ellen said Soren is usually in meetings until the evening, so... Oh, so much she's too good for him. <laughs> Get rid of his little shy but care secrecy. <laughs> Let's save our house call until then. Why don't we go to the mooring deck and find out our next move from there? Roger Nick! Oops. Alright. Uh, have we examined stuff in here? I guess not. Look at that guard. He's standing right in that camera's blind spot. <laughs> he doesn't want to be caught. He's camera shy. From that position, I bet he could even doze off and get away with it. Oh. Oh, guard. That camera. What is it pointed at anyway? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> the inmate? Like, if they're trying to film the defendant, should they be pointed more this way? I guess. Alright. Well, they said mooring deck? Dock? I, do I keep calling it deck. Are they saying deck? It's, it's dock. I'm losing my marbles. Was it 
Did she say? She said. He said doc. They say they're saying doc. I keep saying deck. So where should we start? Mm, let's see. Are there any places we haven't examined yet? I don't know. Let me pull out my uh, magnifying glass. Phoenix discovers peripheral vision. <laughs> what? No. We already investigated the reception hall in Sprocket Manor, the hold, and the Vista deck we haven't been to. I know, we haven't looked at the Vista deck or the hold yet. Yeah, they call me a bit of a, a genius, some might say. <laughs> hey, you're right! We still got some pretty important places left to examine, don't we? The Vista deck is the actual scene of the murder, right? and the lantern with the body in it was stored in the hold. I think there's a good chance we'll find some important clues in those locations. Do we know how to get to the hold? Good question. I think it was labeled in that diagram of the airship in this pamphlet. There it is. There it is. What about the cabin? Are we not going to examine the cabin that Larry was hold held up in? What if there's, like, crazy clues in there about the pterodactyl? <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> did we get everything out here? We did not. It's not every day you get to see an airship up close like this. So I'm pretty psyched for this. Me too. If it wasn't for the fact that it's the scene of a murder... All right, I almost forgot about that part. So that one little tower is all that's keeping the airship from being blown away? Apparently. It must be sturdier than it looks. You know what it reminds me of? What, Maya? What could it possibly remind you of? <laughs> that's not at all. Not at all what I thought she was going to say, but good for her. A single mom raising three kids while holding down a full-time job. Sh sure. Where did that analogy even come from? <laughs> She's so right, though. When I see this tower, that's exactly what I think of. A strong wind blew this bench straight through the air, apparently. It looks like they fixed the sign, but left the bench right where it landed. I wonder why. Maybe the repair guy just hasn't gotten around to it yet? The bench was the pterodactyl all along. <laughs> wow, that sign really got smashed up. There were some really high winds yesterday, and they say that the bench was blown right into the sign. Wow, I wish I could have seen that. If you'd been there, you would have gotten blown away by the wind too, you know. <laughs> okay. This sounds kind of fun, actually. Don't tell me you never tried to use an umbrella to fly when you were a kid. Maya, what do you take me for? Of course I did. I think I'll take staying alive over fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're no fun, Phoenix. Where's the danger? Where's the danger? Where's the cake? Where's the flowers? Oh, there's the the cows. Phoenix, you got with the murderer. You can't have fun. <laughs> so this is the hold. This is where Pierce orchestrated the whole cover-up operation. You better go over this place with a fine-tooth comb. Oh, Phoenix, right? Oh, Phoenix, right? Of course, I will. <laughs> Hey, Nick, weren't we supposed to need a key card to get in here? Huh? You're right. I wonder why I was unlocked. Um. Pierce? It's. I feel like he's the only one that addressed me like this right now. How's it going, Mr. Wright? Oh, 
Dang! <laughs> I did not expect Emma. <laughs> I actually completely forgot about Emma for a minute. How's it going, Mr. Wright? Emma, what are you doing here? Just a little independent investigating for my own sake. Gotta keep the mind sharp. Emma, can we use luminol? Maybe a bit of uh, fingerprint powder? Ah, uh, so the door security system was turned off for the police investigation. We'd like to investigate the hold ourselves. Would that be alright? Yeah, sure. The police just finished their examination anyway. Thanks. We'll just take a quick look around then. Oh, right! You should know that the floor doubles as a huge lift. That's crazy. You can use that lever way back there to raise it up to the vista deck. The police inspected it already, but didn't find anything of particular interest, it seems. If you do go up to the vista deck with the lift, be careful not to fall off. Got it. Thanks. That goes double for you, Maya. <sighs> yes, ma'am! Well, let's get this show on the road. Hi, <laughs> Emma. Any progress with your investigation? Nothing conclusive yet, I'm afraid. Almost everybody was involved with the cover-up. So oh, it's hard to know who or what to believe. I know what you mean. Unless you have some compelling evidence, I'm afraid it's gonna be a tough trial for you. Thanks, Emma. It always is. You're telling me. There isn't much time left, so I've just gotta make do and see what I can turn up. Ooh, it's a cake, Nick! A cake! It's so big, you wouldn't miss one little piece, would they? If you're that in the mood for a mouthful of styrofoam, sure, knock yourself out. You mean it's not real? Well, it sure fooled me. I was so ready to have some of that. I'm really craving cake now. Come on, Nick. Let's go get some. You're so right, Maya. Let's go get cake. Maybe after the trial is over. Alright, Maya. Do you have anything to say about the two Pega cows? What? <laughs> Maya's over here like, oh god. My and Phoenix are gonna freak out <laughs> about the lesbian cows. So, there are two male peggable lanterns in the reception hall. That must mean that these two are female pega cow lanterns. Larry got their sexes mixed up when he replaced the one in the reception hall, huh? <sighs> Maya. <laughs> Lesbian? Didn't he? Jesus, Maya, come on. <laughs> Didn't he see the horns? The difference is pretty glaring if you ask me. Maya! Calm down. And yet he managed not to notice. That's what makes Larry Larry. You know, actually, that's like the, like the least problematic thing Larry's ever done. In fact, it was pretty based of him. Okay. I think he's fine here, guys. I think you guys are the ones that are being a bit off. <laughs> and Larry being Larry is why I've seen more than my fair share of trouble for a lifetime. Oh, Mr. Wright? You know that lantern the victim was found inside of in the reception hall? I'm just about to go piece it back together so the police can examine it. Oh? Okay. We'll stop by for a look, too, once you're done fixing it. Alright. Ooh, look, Nick. It's an airplane. I wonder if Soren built that one, too. Guys, hot take. Was Larry based? <laughs> I think the bulls and cows should decide for themselves. <laughs> True, but listen to how they, these two are talking compared to how Larry talked about it. 
Larry didn't care if the two bulls were together. These guys are really upset about it. <laughs> hey, why don't we take it for a spin? Just a quick tour around the neighborhood. And who do you propose is going to pilot that wooden death trap? Me, of course. Who else? Don't worry. I've seen people fly airplanes on TV plenty of times. <laughs> I'm not saying they're not right. I'm just saying, is Larry right? He, he didn't seem to care, you know? And good for him for not caring. He didn't see what was wrong with it. He's not sitting here being like, oh, there's two bulls. This is bull. <laughs> um, I think I'll pass. It's bare minimum, but it's it's better than usual for Larry. <laughs> I still got my whole life ahead of me. So, this is the airship's engine. It's pretty impressive. And it's all rhythmic. Uh, rhythmic. Like a heartbeat. It's the literal heart of the flying chapel. Look at all those huge gears spinning around and around and around and around and... Oh, I think I'm starting to get dizzy. Yeah, me too. I'm just gonna say that I think I'm the best ally here because I don't want any couples. I hate happy couples. That's so real. That's the real base dancer. These are the flowers we saw in Larry's photo. Petals make them look like little gears. I don't want people to be straight. I don't want them to be gay. I want them to be alone. So real. So real. <laughs> oh, the perfect uh, the perfect flowers for the Sprocket family, huh? Maybe they were going to shower the couple with the petals? I mean, kind of like how people throw rice or confetti? Yeah, like that. Only these were found at the scene of a murder instead. Okay, Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix, have you ever been to a trial in this game series? Every single murder trial ends with a confetti boom when you get a, a verdict. <laughs> You're not one to talk about what's appropriate for what. Maybe someone saw the dead body and they're like, 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 just a little pizzazz. <laughs> I feel like they took away his whimsy this chapter, man. He had a bit of whimsy when he was going on with the time travel. <laughs> they put all of his whimsy into the time travel bit. He was really dead set on that. These must be the dishes and glasses they use for the receptions. Very fancy. I bet we'd be in big trouble if we broke any of them. Whoops! Maya, no! Ooh, I wanna see Nick- Oh my god, is she actually gonna break one? <laughs> you young lady need to stay far, far away from them. Nick? You think I'm going to break them, don't you? Let's just say your rap sheet for breaking things doesn't help your case. Huh? It looks like there's some fingerprints on this candelabra. Well, let's get the fingerprint powder. Emma, where did you come from? <laughs> Emma, I thought you were fixing the bull. Yeah, I just got done dusting that. I was able to pull a set of left hand prints. Do you know whose prints they are? Yes. The prince belonged to the victim, uh, uh, Dumas Gloomsbury. 
was like fingerprints. <laughs> Nick, she smelt them. <laughs> I just figured out something amazing. You did? Get this. If the fingerprints on the candelabra were from his left hand, then Mr. Doom and Gloom must have been left handed. We solved the case. What do you think of that? Do I have the makings of a great detective or what? No, that doesn't prove anything. It just, what hand he held the candelabra in does not, does not determine his handedness. You're a real silly Sally if you thought that deduction was in any way encyclopedic. <laughs> okay, Phoenix. Hey, you're pretty good, Maya. I looked into it myself, and sure enough, the victim really was left-handed. Okay. Silly Sally. <laughs> she got lucky. She got lucky. <laughs> Really? I got it right? Awesome! Uh, good for you, Maya. Good for you? That's all you've got to say! I uh, think you did a real great job, Maya. Way to go. I guess one can never have too much info. Now you're talking. <laughs> you don't know, Phoenix. Handedness has become relevant in some cases before. <laughs> Mr. Gloomsbury being left-handed might be very relevant. Now you're talking. <laughs> but come to think of it. Alright guys, question. Is Emma in the Phoenix fam? Of course she is. That's one of his daughters. This candelabra isn't in the photo Larry took of the hold, is it? That picture was taken when they were getting ready for the first reception, right? Candelabra must have been brought in here sometime after that, then. Hmm. Still possible it has something to do with the incident, though. I'd better add it to the evidence file, just in case. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, it is going to be relevant! A candelabra from the hold bearing fingerprints from Gloomsbury's left hand, which is his dominant hand. I can't believe that Maya shouting that out is going to be relevant at some point during the trial. <laughs> we're gonna bring up that his left hand is his dominant hand. No way, it's relevant. Suck that, Phoenix. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mr. Wright, you can have this fingerprint powder if you like. I have some. Apollo thought it was cocaine. That was like a whole bit two games ago. <laughs> You're giving this to us? You have some! <laughs> you keep it in your desk. That was like a whole bit. They made these jokes already. You have it. You already have some. Tell her you have some already and you kept it for like seven years. Sure. I have four other sets. Thanks. I feel like there's something more to the candelabra, but I just can't put my finger on it. Literally, if I do, it'll smudge the fingerprints. I find the grave. <laughs> I have dug multiple previous graves and nothing <laughs> I feel like- okay. Alright, have we got- oh the bell. What's that? A wedding bell? According to the pamphlet... I was gonna say that Emma and Gumshoe are like cousins to the fam instead of kids. I could see it. Yeah. I could see it. It's just- it's just habitually I see an orphan and, and, and I see an orphan and I'm like, yeah, that's Phoenix's kid. I mean, we got Maya, Pearl, Emma, <laughs> Athena, Apollo. <laughs> Emma's in orbit? Yes. Uh huh. Rise from the Ashes, um, which was her debut case in the first game. 
she uh, she mentions how her parents were dead and she only had uh, Lana. Her big sister. It's used on the Vista deck during wedding ceremonies to bless the newlyweds. I guess they disassemble and store it away here in the hold when it's not being used. <laughs> yeah, Apollo. <laughs> not in- Yes? What do you mean, Matt? He's- Oh, I forgot Trucy. I can't believe I never- I didn't say Trucy. <laughs> he hasn't alive and well, Mom. No, well, no, Matt. I don't know what you're talking about. His mother also died in the fire. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot to mention Trucy when talking about Phoenix's kids. What is wrong with me? That's like his actual <laughs> kid. <laughs> That's his other orphan daughter. <laughs> oh look, there's the lever to lift Emma to- whoa, not to lift Emma. There's the lever to the lift Emma told us about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's his fan and daughter, and then just not the canon daughter. <laughs> With his last name and everything. I'm sorry, Trucy. I feel so bad. Let's try going up on it. I'll flip the switch. Adoption paper is just on the side in the room. Here goes nothing. Wait, I'm not even on it yet. There it goes. Oh, hey, Maya, stop the lift. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Turn black? You just give them a glance like, boring. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, you got a little carried away. Never mind that, move over a little. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is that blood? No, Nick, it's my ketchup. For my hamburger. Welcome to America. B blood? Let me see. Could it be Mr. Gloomsbury's blood? Well, this lift goes up to the Vista deck where the murder took place, so I think that's the most logical conclusion. But I thought the victim was clubbed to death and that there wasn't much blood. Something tells me I'd better take a picture of this. <laughs> Something's telling me in my b b b b b brain. A blood stain that was found on the side of the lift in the hold. It's unknown whose blood it is. Okay. I should ask Emma about it some more later. Maya, can you bring the lift back down now? You got it. I'll go flip the switch again. Maybe also test the blood just to make sure, right? There. Okay. You could have hopped that, Phoenix. You could have hopped that. Done. I want to find out some more about that blood stain. But for now, I guess we should go up to the Vista deck. Take a look around the actual crime scene for ourselves. The view must be great from up there. You mean it would be if it wasn't the scene of a murder. Okay, to the Vista deck we go. Okay, Phoenix. Everywhere you go has is the scene of a murder. Your office, don't know if you remember, was the scene of a murder, remember? <laughs> your boss <laughs> was killed in your office. Remember? <laughs> the courthouse has also been the scene of a murder. And a bombing. <laughs> Everywhere you, you cannot escape murder scenes. <laughs> Let her have some fun. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, this might be wild, but what if Mr. Gloomsbury was trying to protect the wife and groom, or did he try strangling? I'm just wondering if maybe events were misinterpreted. Hmm. Make sure you actually get on the lift this time, Nick. I know, I know. Okay, I'll just flip the switch again, and away we go. So, this is where Ellen was attacked and Mr. Gloomsbury was killed. Yeesh. One wrong step and it's cursed splat on the ground below. Should we go investigate the stuff that's a little closer to the edge? <laughs> well, I don't see much of anything over there. The police investigation didn't turn up any clues either, so... Maybe we don't need to? <laughs> He's scared. Oh, I get it. You're scared, aren't you, Nick? Of course not. Come on, let's go back down and finish checking out the hold. Awesome. I'm glad we did this. I'm glad that the animators drew that whole scene for it just not to be used. That was awesome. Hi, Emma. <laughs> Emma jump scare. Emma, can we check out this candelabra a little more? A little more? What do you- Oops! W what happened? I almost dropped the candelabra and the candle slipped off. Let's be careful with that. It might be important evidence. Wait a minute. Now what? One of the pins that hold the candles is broken. What? There's definitely something fishy about this candelabra. What's the name of the mechanic guy again? Pierce? There is? What makes you say that? Call it Forensic Investigator's Intuition. We already dusted this for prints earlier, so let's test it with Luminol this time. Ah. Knowing Emma, she'd use every test she has at least the same time if she could. Just hang on, this will only take a second. I hope this turns up a new lead somehow. Well, Emma, did you find anything? Take a look at this, Mr. Wright. What is all that blood doing on there? <laughs> Blood Gloomsbury feels like a huge scapegoat. Hmm. Candelabra updated in the court record. Uh, traces of blood were found on it. Maybe somebody got hurt while they were setting up for the reception? These pins are pretty sharp. But if one of the pins is broken, it means there was some force involved. Do you think maybe somebody got stabbed? Do we know when the gloom story was brought into the equation? Was, was it before or after the murder of his sister? I don't think they've said. Yeah, I don't think they've said it. But, but nobody reported anything like that. That's quite a bit of blood. I wonder whose it is. If I have anything that might shed some light on that, I should probably show it to Emma. Okay. Emma, about this blood stain, doesn't something about it strike you as odd? What's so odd about the victim's blood? <laughs> Sorry, was grave digging. <laughs> Any good loot? I'm wondering if perhaps he may have been hired to protect Sora and eventually the bride of her sister's death. Whatever hired him didn't want anyone to know. So what about the victim's blood? That's not exactly- there's just something about it that bothers me. 
mending done sore. I'm really happy about it. Nice! That actually is a great find. What the hell? <laughs> hmm, I'll let you mention it. I can't say I necessarily disagree with you. Maybe I should talk about this some more with her. Uh, about this blood stain. What about it? There's something about it that's been bothering me. Oh yeah? What's that? Well, there's a huge blood stain on the crime scene lift and the blood stained candelabra. Now, this is only a guess, but I'm thinking these two blood stains are. <laughs> Call me crazy, Emma! Call me crazy, but listen, I'm using my superpower I learned from Miles Edwards. It's called logic. You know, you watch the trailers, Emma, for the new for the remasters of the investigations collection. It's you take two puzzle pieces of things that might correlate and you put them together using logic. Okay. You still with me, Emma? I think they might be from the same source. <laughs> Just a hunch. I'm thinking maybe these two blood stains are from the same source. Hmm, I guess that is a possibility. <laughs> Can we compare the two blood stains? Would that take a lot of time? Are you kidding? <laughs> Emma, if I were to ask, do you have a favorite rapper? Well, mine has to be. Logic. <laughs> Logic. <laughs> oh my god. Are you kidding? Don't underestimate the power of science. It'll be done in a jiffy. Jiffy. Oh my god, she was right. And the results are in. That didn't take long now, did it? Hmm. It seems that the blood from the lift and candelabra are from the same person. Okay. Crazy. <laughs> Notice how it's not spelled Giffy. <laughs> so real. Well, the victim was clubbed to death and there wasn't all that much blood. But if it isn't Mr. Gloomsbury's blood... Well, this is just a guess, but... What if Mr. Gloomsbury stabbed somebody with the candelabra pin? That would explain both the huge blood stain on the lift and the blood on the candelabra. Oh my goodness! If that's true, then that means there was somebody else present at the scene of the murder. It does, doesn't it? This just might be substan this just might substantiate Ellen's statement about a third person. Emma, could you have this blood analyzed? Sure thing. Mysterious blood stain on a candelabra with the victim's prints on it. This just might be the thing that back up Ellen's memory of seeing a third person. Next up, the reception hall. It might be worth taking around and uh, taking another look around in there. The reception hall? The forensics team is in there investigating right now. Oh, they are. Well, we don't have time to just sit around. Let's go check out something else. Good idea. We could go question some people. Especially Soren. I have a few questions for that guy. Sounds good, Nick. I have to do some legwork then? Yep. I thought we had to Soren's house for starters. He was accompanying the police on their investigation here earlier, but he's probably home by now. Great, thanks. Later, Emma. <laughs> Well, 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 well.
Uh, yeah, look at you thinking I'm ending stream. Look at you guys thinking I'm ending stream just because I saved my game and went quiet for a minute. Look at you gamers. Look, look. Did you think I'm ending stream? Hmm? Did I say goodbye yet? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Did it look like I was saying goodbye? Mm -hmm. I because it, to me I didn't say a word. It looked like I just saved and uh, <laughs> paused for a minute. <laughs> you said well, well, well. To be fair, which is like an ends. <laughs> but did I say bye? Did I say bye? J just kidding. You guys, you guys know me so well. I'm ending stream. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning into the stream. I was just looking for someone to raid. I just think it's funny. I didn't even say bye yet. And you guys are already sending me off. Well, if you want me gone that badly, I guess I'll end. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning into the stream. It's been fun. Over to entity. Yeah, you. That's what you just. This is what you wanted. Good riddance. Bye. Bye, guys. I'll be back tomorrow, probably. I'll see you guys later. I can't wait until we beat these games and I can start doing longer streams. I'm just really, the only reason I'm doing hour long streams for this is because I'm trying to drag it out as long as possible because I don't want it to end. <laughs> and I don't want there to be a big gap between games. Well, thank you guys for joining me. I'm going to send you over to Entity. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye. Sending love in five, a four, a three, two, one. Bye bye.